Thanks for joining us for this edition of National Focus. I'm Tasia Flosak. Coming up, the Dominica Association of Teachers gives an inside look at incorporating technology in education. The Ministry of Agriculture provides insight on a new race of the Panama disease affecting the global banana industry. And Girardel slash Eglistan Flower Show 2014 to showcase work of the children. Stay tuned for these and other stories after this. The black sitatuka fungus can survive on banana and plantain leaves even after they have been cut from the tree. Farmers and hucksters are encouraged to use alternate cushioning material when moving produce from farm to the market. Do not use banana and plantain leaves as cushioning. It is against the law to move banana and plantain trash from the field. Obey the law and stop the spread of black sitatuka today. Thanks for staying with us. Principal Coletta Challenger, featured speaker at the Dominica Association of Teachers 12th Biennial Conference on Wednesday, gave an in-depth look at technology in education. The conference's theme was Enhancing Education Through Technology. Principal Challenger began by outlining reasons for using technology in the process of teaching and learning. Wes Rogers, 2010, in his article, Teaching in the Classroom, Technology in the Classroom, submitted three major advantages regarding technology in the classroom. One, educators should use technology in the classroom because its wide range of uses and forms has the potential to reach students of all learning styles as well as to be more efficient. Two, the interest and motivation that technology induces in students makes its usage in school important. Educators better prepare students for the future when using technology aimed at addressing each learning style. Numerous benefits can be derived from using technology in the classroom, according to the speaker. Those include students gaining the ability to build background knowledge and learning 21st century work skills. Another reason was also highlighted. Marinelli Janelli, 2013, suggested that some of the benefits of using technology in the classroom are increased student engagement, greater sense of responsibility, improve classroom practice for educators. Teachers also reap the benefits of using technology in the classroom. Many professional development workshops are delivered via online video conferencing. Email fosters professional relationships between colleagues, allowing them to learn from each other how technology has been successfully used to teach various subjects. Teachers can also use the internet, and we're all aware of this, to find supplementary materials to prepare our lesson plans. Principal Challenger emphasized that it is not enough for teachers to use technology in their classrooms from time to time, but on a consistent basis. The more students see their teachers using technology and the more opportunities they get to use it themselves, the less fair and inappropriate use will take place because students will view technology as a tool for learning and work. In her presentation, the speaker acknowledged the possibility of technology being used negatively or with negative consequences. She, however, explained that teachers must be able to manage the data flow in the classroom. For that, educators must be sufficiently tech savvy. In a technological age, we, as educators, cannot afford to be technologically illiterate. Educators need to be educated with regards to that which will enhance the milieu of the classroom. In so doing, we will be on our way to ensuring that our role as educators is one of transformational leadership. A transformational leader is a leader and I add a teacher who identifies the needed change, creates a vision to guide the change through inspiration, and executes the change with the commitment of the members of the group. 
When the Dominica Association of Teachers met on Wednesday for its 12th biennial conference at the Garay Hotel, one of the objectives was to recognize four educators for long years of dedicated service. After 40 years of service to the profession, Mrs. Corina Laville retired as principal of the Warner Primary School. Mrs. Corina Laville has given or dedicated 40 years as an educator in Dominica. She recently retired as a principal at the Warner Primary School, and she has been a stalwart of the Dominica Association of Teachers. Thank you, Mrs. Laville, for your 40 years of service. The Dominica Association of Teachers salutes you today. With the second longest term of service of 39 years, Mr. Mali John Baptist was recognized for his service to the Roosevelt Douglas Primary School in Portsmouth. Mr. Patrick Jeffers retired as principal of the Soufre Primary School after 36 years of service to the profession. Mr. Patrick Jeffers was very instrumental in formulating the policy booklet on AIDS and HIV for education. And this booklet has been accepted, well, throughout Dominica, the Caribbean, and even North America. Also, for 36 years of educating, Mrs. Melina Silvan was recognized in absentia. She retired as principal of the Tibor Primary School. President of the Association, Celia Nicholas, was also acknowledged for her service to the Dominica Association of Teachers. GIS joins with the Dominica Association of Teachers to congratulate the awardees. On Wednesday, the Ministry of Agriculture announced the rapid increase of a relatively new disease called the Fusarium Wilt Panama Disease Race 4 on the global banana market at a press conference held at the Botanic Gardens. The press conference was held in an effort to sensitize the public on the rapid expansion of this new disease and measures needed to reduce the risk of its introduction to the island. According to the head of the Plant Protection and Quarantine Unit in the Ministry of Agriculture, Ryan Ansem, the fungal disease prevalent in Asia and Mozambique, Africa, is said to be more potent and dangerous than the Black Sigatoga and other airborne diseases currently plaguing the banana industry. This, Ansem says, poses serious economic implications to banana and plantain growing countries, primarily due to its soil-borne aspect. It's a fungal soil-borne disease. What that means, it can stay in the soil for decades. With Black Sigatuka, we can put a management system in place to manage the disease, use um, chemicals, fungicide to manage the disease. With this risk for diffusion wilt, there's no cure, there's no chemical that can manage that disease. So we are concerned the Central America and the Caribbean is still free of the disease, but there's the potential um, for the disease to introduce and spread in the Caribbean and Central America. The head of the department noted that although the disease is not present in the Caribbean and Central America, there is increased potential of infection and once infected cannot be managed. He says that most importantly, it poses serious concern to banana production on the island. What is important to note about the disease is once it enters into your country, it can stay in the soil for a number of years. So there will be no production. Um, the Ministry of Agriculture, through the Plant Quarantine Division, will quarantine the area. So there will be no banana and plantain production in that area for some years because the disease is soil borne. It will remain in the soil and it will kill all banana and plantain production. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, banana is the eighth most important food crop in the world and the fourth most important among least developed countries. And Sam highlighted that prevention is the key strategy necessary to reduce risk of its entry into Dominica. What we have to do right now is to develop an emergency action plan 
together with the Caribbean and CARICOM to prevent. So the first strategy would be to prevent the entry of the disease. That it would be the first measure that we have to take. But Dominica can't do it alone. We have to work together, Latin America and the Caribbean, to put quarantine strategies in place to prevent the disease from entering the shore. The pathogen is resistant to fungicide and cannot be controlled chemically. However, it can be identified by extreme yellowing of leaves and blackening of the pseudo stem. And some voice that major focus will be on sensitizing the public and urge hawksters to take special precaution when traveling to possible infected countries. The hawksters, in particular, people traveling. Um, if you enter a farm in Africa, even in China, Asia, uh, banana and plantain farm, where the disease is present, um, to wash off your, your, your shoes, disinfect your clothing, and um, to inform us in terms of your whereabouts um, if you enter a farm in these areas. So it can be spread by, by man, which is the major culprit, by um, water, and by planting material. Again, we are asking the hawksters, the travelers, everybody involved, to take um, the necessary phytosanitary requirements very seriously. Um, as our grandmother always said, prevention is better than cure. And our number one strategy is really to prevent the disease from entering into our show. The deadly race 4 strain of Panama disease that first struck the banana industry more than four decades ago has become a global issue for growers and scientists who are scrambling to find ways to control its spread. In the 1950s, the Panama disease completely wiped out the Grow Michael or Big Mike banana, the dominant cultivar of bananas in Central and South America except in certain areas of Asia. Meanwhile, at the same press conference, coordinator of the Black Sigatoga Management Unit, Carl Abraham, divulged information on the Ministry of Agriculture's continuous efforts in providing sustainable reinforcement for battling the Black Sigatoga disease on island. In presenting an update of the management of the disease, Abraham informed that to date, 2,068 acres of plantain and bananas have been successfully sprayed. As far as black cigarette control is concerned, um, we are at the end of our fifth spray cycle. We use the material called tilt with a, an emulsion. And when I say an emulsion, we mix water with oil, which is quite acceptable and you know, can do the job just as well while severely reducing our cost, especially on oil. To date, we have sprayed a total of 940 acres of bananas. That's to date. I know I haven't gotten the information from the north and northwest. They are the last places to come in. Um, we have over 1,000 acres of plantains that have been sprayed, totaling to date 2,068 acres, bananas and plantain. Abraham provided insight on the ministry's decision to not spray residential areas. Now, this last spray cycle, we took the decision not to spray residential areas. So some homes, they have a plot in the back, quarter acre and up, because of the tilt. The tilt was more potent than the last one we used, and it was recommended more for the open fields. So in such a situation, I have been recommending to homeowners who ask the questions to use a biofungicide that is locally available. Biofungicides, the active ingredient is either bacterium or some other non-harmful um, substance. Well, once you mix it with water, it is activated and it will do the job just like a chemical. Okay? So we have been recommending one for use some farmers have even opted to use it in between our sprays, and that's quite acceptable. She indicated that with the black cigotoga disease, unlike yellow cigotoga, chemicals have to be rotated, otherwise the fungus develops resistance to the fungicides. The coordinator informed that currently the ministry is attempting 
to rotate five different fungicides. She also explained that the ministry is awaiting information from communities of the north to evaluate the total number of acres sprayed. According to Abraham, the ministry is in a better position going forward as it relates to management of the disease, with one key advantage being that farmers are better informed. For instance, in the north, Calibishi is fairly clean, okay? Um, and going one north, you'll find that Benz and Val, an area called Val, are heavily infested, whereas um, Blenheim is full. You know, so the north, you have pockets of the disease. But the advantage right now is because of all the information that has been going out and farmer meetings and so on, the farmers are now aware of what the disease is, the stages of the disease, when to cut the leaves off, because that was one of our initial problems. People were over deleafing. We were talking about delief, delief, delief. And in the south, we'd find it go, and somebody has cut off. They're down to two leaves. Two leaves on a plant can't do anything for the plant. But the farmers in the north are an advantage in that they have the information ahead of the disease getting to them. So I think in terms of management, we'll be in a better position, you know, going forward. All roads will lead to the floral communities of Girardel and Eggleston for the annual flower show scheduled to take place from May 2nd to the 11th. The show, which has been included in the 2014 Dumfesta calendar of events, will be staged under the theme Creativity with Flowers and will showcase the talents of the villagers through floral arrangements. The flower show, which has been running for over 30 years, will this year also highlight the work of school children. The twin communities of Girodel and Eggleston will this year present again what we believe is the most beautiful show of the year. As the theme of this year's show, Creativity with Flowers, which was prepared by 10-year-old Tariq Richards, a student of the Girodel Primary School, indicates, the show will involve the participation of young persons, in particular the school children, in creative displays. The variety of displays are created to meet the expectation of the many patrons who each have their individual taste and sense of beauty. So many parts of the plant, its leaves, flowers, seeds, fruits, root and stem are all beautiful and decorative and will be used in ac with accessories to complement the arrangements to great effect. Schools and elderly citizens have been invited to come and view the exhibits, which will be open for public viewing from Saturday, May 3rd. The site of the flower show will be wheelchair friendly. The show will run from Saturday, 3rd May from 10 a.m. with a ribbon cutting ceremony to Wednesday, May 7th. On Sunday, after the celebration of 9 a.m. Mass at the Catholic Chapel, it will open again at 11 a.m. and 10 a.m. on the other days, that's Monday to Wednesday. The grounds will remain open until 10 p.m. each day. Schools are invited to take their students on Tuesday and elderly citizens on Wednesday, since those days will be less crowded. To ease traffic congestion, the market booths are being located on site. The show will be staged on a 2.6 acre property which was purchased for that specific purpose. Organizers of the show have confirmed that this year efforts will be made to limit the level of traffic congestion which has been a problem in the past. Previously we have had many complaints about patrons who visit the show and they say the roads used to be so congested, the traffic, you had booths on either sides no place to park. Therefore, people who would come would just drive way straight through Girodel and back to their desk where they came from. So, um, since we purchased this parcel of land last year, we had the very first, we had the first show in nine years. After nine years and nine years um, absence, we were back last year and we thought, well, okay, let us try 
to ease the traffic congestion, let traffic flow easily. Um, we had only booths on site and people appreciated it and they did say it was much better and they say therefore they will return. Adults will be required to pay a $10 entrance fee while children will be asked to pay $5. Groups of school children and senior citizens will be permitted to view the flower show free of charge on Wednesday, May 7th. And that's the news coming up. We'll share with you the benefits of drinking water with a splash of lemon. Stay tuned. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think life. It's amazing what a simple thing like water can do for your health. Experts say that the simple act of sleep can pull water from your body, leaving you dehydrated. People who drink lemon water in the morning report that they experience a mental boost and have increased energy. Drinking a clean glass of water in the morning helps return hydration to your body and flushes out your kidneys, while the lemon extract contains strong antibacterial, antiviral and immune boosting powers which can also help as a weight loss and liver cleanser. These two powerhouses combined boost your immune system, balance your pH level and cleanse your skin of any impurities. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here at GIS, I'm Tasia Flosak. Thank you for watching.